Thank you. Um, a more controversial uh, issue is the ketogenic diet for <coughs> cancer. Um, somebody asks if they have cancer, is the ketogenic diet good for me or is there a variation of the diet that has shown to be beneficial with cancer patients and does it vary with the different types of cancer? Rob, why don't you go first? Um, if, if I can say a little bit about, we've recently had an oncologist in Australia, Dr. Dawn LeMann, who spent time in Sydney uh, with Duron and Paul and uh, also talked in Melbourne, gave a talk at one of our big uh, hospitals in Melbourne to the medical grand rounds on low carbohydrate nutrition uh, in, as a part of cancer therapy. Uh, there's a lot of interest in this all around the world. Some cancers uh, do seem to be quite amenable to, um, to being on low carb ketogenic diets, uh, particularly the common ones, the breast, um, the bowel, the colon, uh, um, colon cancer, uh, pancreatic cancer, and a number of cancers, prostate cancer. Not all cancers seem to be affected, but the ones that are. Uh, Dawn certainly gets her cancer patients very ketotic, particularly for their treatments, if they're having radiotherapy, if they're having chemotherapy. And we're talking about getting ketone levels up in the threes and fours uh, on the days of having treatment. Because really, it it makes the, um, so she uses fasting as well, and imagine we'll get to fasting at some stage today. So absolutely, there's a lot of interest. For all sorts of reasons, we should all be eating a very healthy diet. Uh, people with cancer have an extra good reason to be eating a healthy diet, and the ketogenic diet is being researched thoroughly. There are something like 14 major trials going on in breast cancer, uh, ketogenic diet in breast cancer at the moment and some of the results uh, look good. Yeah, and she did stress that she wasn't completely convinced with ketogenic diet on its own, that it was important that the ketogenic diet was used as an adjunct to um, traditional cancer therapies. Um, uh, yeah, not as confident to just bypass traditional cancer therapies and use ketogenic diet on its own. I'll just uh, comment further on that. It's an excellent talk, which I'm sure will be up on YouTube uh, soon. I had the privilege of having dinner with Dawn. She said uh, a couple of interesting things with regard to cancer. Um, the blood cancers, the leukaemias and stuff, don't seem to have any evidence yet, but there's uh, emerging evidence for the so-called solid organ cancers. So she named breast and uh, brain cancers in particular as being... Um, uh, sensitive to ketogenic diets. Um, some of the mechanisms behind that are that cancer cells are very, very hungry for glucose. And if you starve the glucose, you starve the, the cancer. Uh, cancer cells use 20 times more glucose than normal cells. Just a comment, not directly related to ketogenic diets for cancer, but a risk factor for cancer. At last count, at least 13 separate types of cancers have been causally associated with obesity. So clearly, uh, if you're worried about cancer risk, then uh, reducing your body weight down to a, a healthy body weight is certainly recommended. And then, as uh, Sean just mentioned there, about the uh, use of glucose by many types of cancers, uh, there's something called the Warburg effect, which is uh, effectively just represents the capacity and the desire for cancers to metabolise glucose and to have very little capacity to use other sources of uh, nutrient for energy. So that's well worth a read if you're interested in exploring the area. And certainly from a medical perspective, one test that is frequently performed to assess for the recurrence of the cancer is called a PET scan positron emission tomography, topography. So what that actually does is we get a, a radionuclide, a tracer, something that's radioactive, attach it to a sugar molecule and inject it into the body. And then we use special cameras to see whereabouts uh, this accumulates. And the reason that we use this positively is because it accumulates often, not in all types of cancers, but often in many types of cancers it accumulates. 
the reason it accumulates because it's attached to the sugar and the, these particular types of cancers that you're looking for often have that huge affinity for sugar. So I'm not going to give any specific nutritional advice on that, but I will leave you with those bits of information.